How's it going, YouTube? So I started doing a few things on the trailer. I thought, I guess, you know what? Might as well make a video of it. Uh, so when I bought my Diamond C here, I completely forgot to click on the option to put a solar charger on the trailer. It was 170 bucks. I wish I clicked on it and I don't know how I forgot to click on it, but I did. So I went ahead and bought my own. So I know the ones that Diamond C, they come with a seven watt solar charger. Um, it's nice too, they weld you up a nice bracket and everything to put on the neck of the trailer. You know, everything, you don't have to put anything on, they install it, but I forgot to do that. So I went ahead and I bought this 12 watt one because why not go overkill? And uh, as you can see, I don't even have the solar panel in here because they're right down the trailer. You get this guy right here, which is your trickle charging system. And it lets you also know with this red dot, if it's charging or not, if you're in direct sunlight or cloudy, you'll blink. Um, and you got your inline fuses and everything. And uh, it's all in one set. You just plop these terminals on your battery, plug this side into that. That side goes into your solar and you're good to go. I, uh, I always just use double side sticky tape and smack that up uh, along the side. And uh, I'm hoping that I do have enough run from the solar panel down to the battery box that's down over there. I'll show you guys out here in a second. I've had this on my old flatbed trailer and my dump trailer, and those ones are only four watts. And I've gone with use, man, probably a month of not charging my dump trailer, and that's probably dumping two or three times a day. It's always nice to do a full charge over the night, but if for some reason your trailer's out there sitting, you know, for a few weeks and you just got to grab and go, at least you know your battery's still good for a few loads. So I got my pump here, this is my battery. So I'm probably just gonna take that little piece I got and just probably smack it up here at the corner or somewhere up and out of the way. All I gotta just do is just pop them on your terminals here. And let's see here, I got all the lines coming out of these holes down here on the Diamond C, those grommet holes. I think I might have enough room to smack those other ones through there. If not, there's a few drainage holes I can probably uh, fish it through. There's another hole right there also. So uh, that's where the rest of the jibber jabber is going to go. And that's what the Diamond already comes with right there for your shore power. That guy right there. I can all my other videos. So this is what I got going on right now. This is the 12 watt solar panel. It's a little bit bigger because the other one's 7 watt that comes with Diamond C. And uh, this is what I got about. Yeah. I didn't want to drill into a brand new trailer, but I didn't want to do double-sided sticky tape on this because I don't want it to try to fly off or someone can come and just rip it off and take it for themselves. So I did a few things. So this is all the cable you get. So I think I'm good. I think I'll have enough length from there to here, here to there to get the run that to the battery. So this is what I got done so far. I drilled the holes. Uh, I think they were 9 16 and uh, I'm using all grade eight hardware, of course, just because it looks a lot better. Show you guys what I did here. All right, so this is what I did here. So I had this tape, I put this down just so there's a little bit of a cushion between the frame and the solar panel. And because it's not a perfectly flat surface, this is gonna give a little bit of give so this solar panel here doesn't bend on the ends and break the tabs off. And then I put these down in here just so it has something else to rest on because this kind of cups down a little ways. And of course I drilled the holes, I chamfered them off, uh, dabbed a little bit of paint on the inside of them just to keep uh, the moisture out and the rust out. But these little uh, pieces, these single sided uh, pads right here, that's gonna help waterproof it or make it water resistant at least so there's not gonna be any moisture getting down in there. Um, because you know, when we start getting rust on a trailer, then it's just a little train wreck. At least out here in California, I have to worry about it as much. But preventative maintenance type of stuff, and you can find this stuff anywhere. I don't know what the heck it's called. I was looking for a few different things in my garage, and I found this stuff. Hopefully, you guys see that that right there. That is what I'm talking about. And I just cut it down to size for what I needed it for. Uh, so yeah, that's what I did. All I pretty much did so far is drill holes and measure it out. So get this guy popped back on here
Okay, that's good. Washer, washer, washer. All right. So then, my next thing that I'm doing for preventative theft, or yeah. So I got nylocks, and this is all the type of stuff I always have in my garage. So get your guys' box of nuts and bolts set up, and uh, I think I got another set of washers. Yep. All right. And my nylocks. Start plopping those guys on there. If I remember right, these bolts, they are two inches in length, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right, or inch and three eighths. Just enough. Everybody always wants to steal your stuff, so try to protect it the best you can. Washer. See, that looks pretty dang clean. These panels are pretty heavy duty. They're all aluminum. Got a few threads in the nylock. All right, tighten this last back. And these things are pretty dang bulletproof, like literally. I think there was a video they shot this with a shotgun and the panel was still fine. So you don't have to worry about no rock chips. It's like a big old thick layer of, uh, I don't know, vinyl, silicone, something, something. But all right, we're gonna track these wires down to the battery now. No, it's a pretty self-explanatory thing, but I know some people, they like to just see it happen before they do it. So if I can help you guys out with something simple like this, I'll be more than happy to. I'll run it the way they did everything else. Started getting ahead of myself. Underneath the trailer now, as you can tell. All right, so that is it for my length here. All right, so I admit to Vite, and I don't have enough length here to reach to my box, which is right there. So I did this. I just ordered this on Amazon. So they're called um, SAE Power Automotive Extension Cable. And I purchased one of these in a 10 gauge. I can't zoom in, but 10 gauge, 21 bucks plus shipping and good old tax. So I got that coming to route the rest of it. I just bought a 10 footer to be safe. I probably only need six, uh, probably eight feet. So that is there. We're just gonna kind of pop that between the hydraulic lines right there. Man, I love Dynasty. Look at all these grommets they put there. Grommet, grommet. They even gave me an extra grommet right there. Grommet, everything is grommeted. Nothing's gonna get cut. I don't know if you guys saw one of my old videos on my uh, Iron Bull trailer, my 
dump trailer, there was a lot of lines rubbing up against a few things, so I had to wrap the line so nothing would rub up against it. The, just the attention to detail they put here for the longevity of a trailer is just awesome. I, I love it. All right, so that extension's on order. That's gonna come and just wrap with the rest of the stuff. We'll pop right through the box, right through there. Got our uh, controller right here, and it's pretty dang small in size. You got nice amount of uh, length between the wires. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna, I have these 3M Commander strip things. I've used them before on the other trailers and they've never fallen off. They work great. Just kinda go like this at an angle. And you can screw it in there if you want, but I just, I don't want to screw sticking out of the side of the box because you'll see where I'm about to put it. So it's up and out of the way. I can see that red light if it's charging. Take this other piece, smack it right down on top of it. Boom, just like that. Take it. Pop it right there. Here it's stuck on there. There you go. Up and out of the way. I can connect. This is the solar charger part. And uh, that is what goes to your battery. So that will connect. I'm not going to connect it right now. So that would just connect right in there. There you go. And then, of course, positive negative onto the batteries and that is it you're good to go so i'm just going to toss all that right up in there so the moment i get my extension harness all i got to do is run it through the rest of the frame up through the box up and around up and out of the way behind the battery most likely connect that take that connect it to the terminals positive negative and that is it that's all you need to do and boom you got yourself a solar charging system and uh, it was, I think this solar charger was $180 plus 20 bucks for the extension, so 200 bucks. Um, and it's a 12 watt charger. So if you're using this trailer a lot going, even for your dump trailer, if you're using it a lot, it's going to definitely help keep up because just the little trickle charger that your uh, truck provides to the battery, that doesn't really, really do much. But this right here, as you're driving, I mean, having both of those feed into the system is definitely going to benefit you. Um, on my dump trailer, I actually added two batteries to it, which definitely helped it out quite a bit. Um, but this isn't a dump trailer. So the one battery, the charge coming from the truck, the charge coming from the solar battery, uh, going to this is going to be more than enough. I mean, I charged it the entire day. Um, if I know it's going to be parked, I'll just throw the charger on there just so I know it's ready to go. Future plans on it, on the trailer. So I have my winch up there right now. Um, I'm gonna find a box that fits up here so I can plop a winch inside of there or just have that box there for ratchet straps and everything so I can still use a receiver mount for the winch but have the battery in there so I can just do a quick connection. Um, and then I wanna get a few more belly boxes. I wanna put one more on this side um, and then one on the other side, just a, like a 36 inch box. Thing would be the best so so those are the future things uh can't wait to actually get the winch part done that's uh number one uh because i really want to get the 12,000 pound winch on there i just need to have a dedicated battery then i'm going to get a solar charger for that battery also um because i don't want to drain the heck out of that battery using the winch and then not be able to lower and raise the tail for whatever reason so have that own dedicated battery which is, i think the best way to do it regardless so that is going to do it for this video i'm going to go ahead and just kind of rip through these videos and get it posted up um this is the same day actually i just uh, i did the fuel filters on my truck also um so that's going to conclude this video super easy process just to plop down a solar panel on your truck or on your truck on your trailer so get yourself a solar panel get that sucker plugged in plumbed up and ready to go again yeah i couldn't finish it but I'll finish that sucker real soon the moment that piece comes. It says it's going to be here on Thursday. Today is Sunday, so got a few days. But it's not necessary. I'm just doing it for convenience. Uh, that's it on this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, if you liked the video, please like the video. And uh, 
please do consider subscribing. I definitely appreciate it. Other than that, have a good night.